Welcome to Taiji's Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make oden. So for those who know One Piece, you may have seen this in anime and manga. But I don't think this is so well known outside of Japan. But in Japan, this is probably one of the most beloved comfort food in the cold seasons. In the old times, like 30, 40 years ago, when I was growing up, we had vendors like coming to sell these oden. But nowadays, we don't find those vendors. But instead, nowadays, people go to a convenience store to buy these. From mid autumn to spring, you'll be able to find this in any convenience store. What it is, just different kind of ingredients put together in soy sauce based soup. Since it's got a lot of different kind of ingredients inside, the flavor is just so rich, but still in one harmony, it's just so delicious. And for this, you do need some special ingredients, but you can also be creative with this and put different kind of ingredients, or just make it with the ingredients that you have available. And this was also requested, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and hopefully you get to make it someday. Then, let's get started. Here are the ingredients for making oden. So today I have many variations of ingredients, but you don't necessarily have to have all these. These are just kind of typical oden ingredients and the things that I like. But if you can't get hold of these, you can just get a couple of these. And if you go to like a larger Asian supermarket, then if you're lucky, you can find these kind of frozen oden set package where you have all the ingredients together. Uh, so you can buy that. Uh, but today I'll be showing different kind of ingredients that I got separately. So I have chicken wings, eggs, Two kind of konyaku, one is a firm konyaku and the other is a Thai string konyaku. And I also have two types of fish cakes. One is a chikua, is a grilled fish cake, and the other is a type of satsumaage or gobomaki, which is a fried fish cake with burdock inside. And I also have satsumaage or fried tofu. Then I have a daikon radish. Then for the broth I have kombu kelp and dry shiitake mushrooms. And also for the broth, I have dashi powder. If you don't have this, you can skip this, but if you have it, it'll give more deeper flavor to the broth. Then for the seasoning, I have soy sauce, sugar, and salt. Then let's get into it. So before we start cooking, I'm gonna explain about the different ingredients. So for oden, it's common to use two types of konyaku, solid konyaku and these types of string konyaku. For more detailed information about konyaku, please watch my other video on that. These are made from konyaku yam. These yams are made to paste and then cooked to different forms. And commonly different types of fish cakes like these are used, it also varies differently in the regions. This is one very typical fish cake, chikua, fish base is stuck on a skewer and grilled. These are type of satsumaage, this one has burdock inside but these come in different shapes and sizes and so whatever you can find is fine. And this is gammodoki, this is made of mainly of tofu with different other ingredients and they're reshaped and then fried. It's also a very common thing in Japan but if you don't have this then you can just use regular tofu, preferably more of a firm tofu. Now let's get into it. Let's prepare the ingredients. Then for these I don't need to do anything, I just need to open it up. And then chikua. It's quite common to cut them in diagonal, so just like this. Then gammodoki is a little bit too big, so I'm gonna cut into kind of bite-sized pieces. Just like this. Then for the konyaku, it's soaking in water, so I'm gonna get rid of that water. And throw this away. And these konyaku is very typical to cut them in triangle shape, so I'm gonna do that. First in a rectangle like this, and then... And then you have these kind of typical oden shape. And these konyaku noodles, same thing. And these water I want to get rid of. And today I'll be using half of this. So as the next thing, I'm gonna prepare the daikon radish. So for this, it's preferable to use the bottom part because they tend to have more flavor, especially when you cook them. Depending on the cooking, you don't really have to peel this, but for oden, it's common to peel the skin, so I'm going to do that. And these I'm going to cut in into like 2-3 centimeter width. So the next step, you don't necessarily have to do this, but it's just kind of give a nicer shape. So for all it's typical to take these edge off. Next step is also not a crucial thing, but for all it's common to do this. 
where you cut into a daikon radish like this, only a couple millimeters deep. This will help the daikon to soak in the soup, but also it'll be easier to break down with the chopsticks. Just like this. So that's that for the daikon radish. So the chicken wings, I need to separate them at the bottom and the top. So here's the joint, and you want to kind of go above a little of the joint here, and then cut them right here. Then it gets cut very easily. Here's the elbow joint, and then I'm going to cut into right above that, right here. And that's that. Then all the ingredients are cut into pieces, and we're going to have to pre-cook them. So for the satsumage and gammoloki, we're gonna let it through just slightly to get rid of the excess oil because they've been fried and the old oil is not healthy for you. So in a boiling water, I'm just gonna let it run through a little bit. Just like this for a couple seconds, fine, then this is finished. Then this is done for that. And for the konyaku, we're gonna let it boil one more time. We want to get rid of the kind of odor, uh, but also so that the new flavor will soak in better. So we're gonna put this in here. And then we're gonna turn the heat to high and bring this to boil. Then once this comes to boiling, then this is finished. Then that's done for that. Then next, we're gonna preheat the chicken wings. The main reason to do this is to get rid of the excess oil, but also the excess blood. Or sometimes they have feathers, so to get rid of that. So we're gonna put this in here. So once it comes to boil again like this, I'm gonna take it out. And so as you can see, the blood has come out a little bit, so we're gonna get rid of this. We turn it off. And then this, we wanna wash this very lightly with running water. So sometimes you have a feather like this, and then you wanna get rid of these. If you see these blood, uh, then you want to get rid of these as well. And that's finished for that. As the next thing, we're going to pre-cook the daikon radish. For the daikon radish, it's very common to use these so-called kome no togijiru, or the washing water of the rice. This is the water that came out washing the rice. But if you don't have this, you can just use regular water. Supposedly this will help to take away the tanginess of the daikon radish. Then to cook daikon radish or any root vegetable, it is said that it's best to cook on cold water. So we're gonna put it in here. And then we're gonna turn the heat to high and bring this to boil. So once it's come to a boil, I'm gonna turn the heat to medium. Then we're gonna cook like this in medium heat for five to 10 minutes. So after about 5 minutes, this is finished, I'm going to turn it off, I'm going to take this out. So this is finished, but we have a lot of scum around, so I'm going to wash this quickly with running water. Then that's done for that. So as the last thing, we're going to boil the eggs. With a gadget like this, I'm going to poke a hole in the egg, so that once it's boiled, it'll be easy to peel off the shells. When you put this inside here, make sure you use a spoon so that the egg doesn't hit the bottom and crack. For the old egg, we want a hard boiled egg, so I'm gonna cook this for 10 minutes. Make sure you mix this like this every now and then so the egg yolk is not on the side but it's in the middle. So the 10 minutes is passed, I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna take this in cold water. And then once this is cooled down a little bit, I'm going to peel off the shell. Because I made the hole in the bottom, it's very easy to peel off. So now we have all the ingredients prepared, let's put them together with the broth. So in a large pot, I'm going to put in 4 cups of water. Then in that, about half teaspoon of salt. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. Then one tablespoon of sugar. Then in this, about five gram or one package of dashi powder.
Then in here, I'm going to put in the kombu kelp and the shiitake mushroom. Then we're going to turn the heat to high and bring this to boil. So once this comes to a boil, I'm going to take out the kombu kelp and the shiitake mushrooms. And here, we're going to put in all the rest of the ingredients. And then as we're waiting for this to come to boil, we can prepare the kombu kelp and the shiitake mushrooms. So for the kombu kelp, I want to make some strips. There's no really set way to make this, but strips like this is fine. And these I'm gonna fold in half. And tie it up like this. Just like this. And the shiitake mushroom, the whole thing will be a little bit too big, so I'm going to cut it in half. For the ones that have a stem, I'm going to take off the stem. And we're also going to put everything in here. Then once this comes to a boil, I'm going to turn the heat to low. And then we're gonna put the lid on and cook like this in the soup for about 20 to 30 minutes or so, so that everything will be cooked and so that all the ingredients will contribute to the soup. So 30 minutes has passed. Some of the ingredients will puff up like this. Then this is finished, I'm gonna turn heat off. So you can eat like this, but for all then all the ingredients will taste much better if they soak in the soup. So I'm gonna let it rest and let it cool off on its own because when the ingredients cool down, they shrink a little bit and as they shrink, they'll soak in the soup. So I'm gonna put the lid back on and let it rest for about three to five hours or so and let it cool off. So it's been about five hours now. This is looking really good. I'm gonna take out just the amount that I will need for today. A little bit of soup. So we're just gonna need to heat them up. Turn the heat to high and bring this to boil. Now this has come to boil, I'm going to turn heat to low and heat it up like this for about 2 minutes or so so that all the ingredients will be heated to the middle, especially the eggs. Then now 2 minutes has passed. Oh yeah, this is looking so good. Then I'm going to turn heat off. Then this is ready. Let's eat. Oh, it smells so great. Let's eat. Okay, let's dig in. So eating directly from the pot is a little bit too hot, so I'm gonna put it in a bowl like this. Itadakimasu. Let's start with my favorite, konnyaku. Itadakimasu. Oh, so good. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Oh, so soft. And for all then, typically in Japan, we eat it with Japanese mustard. I wouldn't suggest using a Western mustard because uh, Western mustard, they have vinegar inside and the vinegar doesn't really match with all then. So if you don't have this, then just go without it. It's just fine. So then I have a chikua. Yagimasu. Mmm. Chikua just soak up the flavor from the soup. Oh, so delicious. I also really like this shiitake mushroom. Mmm, so perfect. Gamodoki or the fried tofu. Mmm, also so good. And this all the konyaku. Oh, this is definitely my favorite. Mmm. And the daikon radish. As you can see, you can very easily break it with your chopstick. And if you look at the inside, the flavor is soaked in all the way through the middle. This is gonna be really delicious. Mm. So the daikon radish has a little bit of sweetness when you cook it, and that sweetness of daikon radish with the oden soup is just a really great match. Mm. So delicious. So the satsumage with gobo inside, or the burdock inside. Daigimasu. Mm. So the flavor is a little bit different than the chikua. Oh, it's just so good. Mm, mm, mm. 
all this all them flavor just goes so well with the rice. Let's have some kombu. Mm. So often with kombu, they just kind of come out like this. It's no problem. Another highlight for me, all them, is this tamago. So the whole thing is a little bit too big, so I'm gonna cut it in half. Mustard to it. Egg yeah, well, Mmm. The egg white has soaked up the soup, and it just has a really good flavor, and I love this tamago in all them. Mm -hmm. And yet, my favorite is still this konyaku. Mmm. So even though the konyaku there is exactly the same products, just in a different shape, still they just kind of taste differently because they're in different form. And either way, they're both so very delicious. Oh, I love this really chewy texture. Oh, the soup is just so very delicious. So full of flavor. Oh, that was so delicious. Oh, that was so delicious and just so filling. And it really warmed up from inside. So as you saw, the process of making all that itself is not that difficult. It might be a little bit challenged to get all the ingredients. But like I say, you don't have to get all these ingredients. It can also be creative what you put inside and there is some modern version of this. You can also put in other meat like pork, beef, or also even like sausage. Or in some region they put in also octopus or squid. Or also you can put in different kind of vegetables, especially the root vegetable. You can try putting different things inside what is available in your area. As long as you have this base soup, then it's still all then. And if you don't put in any meat, you can make this vegetarian or even vegan if you take out the eggs. So I hope you give this a try with whatever you have available. If you enjoyed what you saw, I'd love it if you could hit the like button for me so this video can be spread out to more people. And if you have any feedbacks, any questions, any requests, please feel free to write anything in the comments below. I always, always really enjoy reading them. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.